what you guys got another video here for you i thought i'd share my thoughts of windows 11 or so-called a windows 11 microsoft is edging towards windows 11 as it's fully marked windows 11 in this build and microsoft being microsoft will probably try and pass it off as a new operating system when really under the hood it's probably just windows 10 uh, with a facelift as you can see here it clearly states that the product version is 10.0 and you can see the file version is 10.0 and the build numbers at the end there so it is really basically windows 10 um, with a facelift of windows 11 or so-called windows 11 so is this some sort of uh, fake hacked version of windows that some people claim on the internet i don't think so i think it is a genuine version because it will be very difficult to uh, hack a operating system like this because obviously it's locked and you can't get access to the code it has had facelifts done before that's nothing new from microsoft you can see they've got color uh, folders now added in here and if you can remember windows xp they did the same thing it was called windows xp plus and you could buy it and download it and it will give you extra features and these were digital media games themes screensavers and a lot more and these were just enhancements to the actual operating system and that's all it is it to me it's really just a feature update really where you've got added features you've got some nice transitions going on here which looks very much like a mac os and again it really does comes down to uh, what you're looking for in an os um i really do think they've done a really nice job of it do i like it yes i do i think it looks absolutely lovely it looks a lot better than what it used to look like but is it worth it it's just Windows 10 with a facelift. That's all it is. It's not a new operating system. This version is still built off of a Windows 10 code base. So everything is the same as Windows 10, apart from these added features. And Microsoft have been uh, experts at doing that over the years. They've been using older versions of Windows and using a bit of code from there, and they just upgrade it. And this is what this latest release is, in my opinion. It's got a few new added features like widgets, a new start menu and then also you've got some new themes and new icons and that's basically what it is really uh, it's the same uh, same gig it's not a real different uh, operating system it's not been built from the ground up in my personal opinion because it's still got a lot of windows 10 attached to it is that a bad thing well it depends on what they're going to do with this operating system and how they're going to market it is it going to be free is it going to be a paid solution where you're going to have to go ahead? Is it going to be subscription service? I mean, I'm pretty sure that Microsoft want you to sign in and use it as a signed in account because you have to sign in to use the widget system here. So that means you're going to be always signed in to your Microsoft account, which means more data collecting, more, more telemetry, which is going to concern a lot of people. There's more telemetry probably in this one than there was the previous one. And I think the answer to that is you either get used to it or you find another operating system to use because pretty much that's the way things are and that's the way things are going to stay and they're going to get worse so if you're worrying about telemetry and data collecting on this version it's going to be pretty much the same as the previous versions and i'm pretty sure about that because it's just got more enhancements that actually collect data as well and i know that's going to concern a lot of people about data collecting and telemetry and if that is the case, then you're best off pulling the plug out of the computer and stop using the internet because everywhere you go is now collecting data. So get used to it or don't use the computer at all. So is this OS a breath of fresh air? Is it a new revelation? I don't think so. I just think it's just a revamped Windows 10 to try and uh, get some trust back in its customers and consumers because a lot of people didn't like Windows 10. I don't think it was that bad in my personal opinion. I think it was probably one of the most secure operating systems that Microsoft have released uh, to date. And also it dealt with a major malware issue that was happening with Windows 7. Now, if you've been a PC repair tech, you'll know that malware plagued Windows 7 really badly. And you used to always see tons of these coming into the workshop to have malware removed from them. And that sort of went away when Windows 10 come about. It did deal with the malware issue quite a lot and uh, you have to give uh, Microsoft a lot of credit for that. 
Now, you're always going to get your haters, and that's just basically the way the world works. I mean, Microsoft or Windows 10, you either love it or hate it, and it has such a big market share that it's going to be very, very difficult to please everyone. Some people are going to love it, and some people are going to hate it, and that's just the way it is. There's features on here that some people are going to like, and other people don't like them. And again, it's very hard to please everyone. If you don't like it, you can always try out uh, Mac OS or you can always try Linux. There's other options out there, but they have their own pitfalls and flaws as well, even though you'll never hear a Linux person say that because they're always wearing their rose-colored glasses. But let me tell you, it's not a perfect operating system and it can't do a lot of things that Windows can do, which is a really big problem for a lot of people, that are especially trying to transition from Windows to Linux. Let's quickly talk about some of the things that probably concern people uh, on the internet right now about this release. And we'll go through some of these right now. So first off, the name. Does it really matter what it's called? I don't care whether it's called Windows 11, Windows Sun Valley, or whether it's called, you know, Windows. It doesn't really matter. It's just the name at the end of the day. It's not going to change uh, the outcome of this operating system. It just is what it is. Secondly, I think what people would like to see is a stable operating system where there's very little downtime and very little issues with Windows updates. Now, I know some people don't have many problems with Windows updates, but there's tons of hardware out there and different systems and people use PCs in different ways. And I think people just want more stability and less problems with updates, i.e. where you're getting blue screen of death or you're having audio issues or you're having some sort of issue uh, with uh, the latest update and you're having to roll back or you're having to uninstall a particular update because it's messed up. Microsoft need to get their uh, act together and start to test a lot of this stuff before they roll it out to the general public and stop using us as guinea pigs. That's my personal opinion. That's what gives Windows 10 such a bad rap, in my personal opinion. Another thing I think a lot of people would like to see is a, a de-bloated version where for gamers or for people that just don't need all of this, you know, bloat inside their operating system because they have to spend a lot of time going in and turning a lot of this stuff off because they don't use it. And it will be much more easier to give people a, a lighter version which doesn't have all that bloat in it like widgets, weather maps and all this sort of stuff, maps, things, background apps that everyone has to turn off, all your privacy settings that you have to go through and turn off and then they get re-enabled every time you do a Windows update and it becomes a bit of a nightmare. I think this causes more problems for a lot of people where they're going into group policy and turning things off and then they have issues with their microphone, camera and other things because they forget how they turned it off and it just causes a lot of problems. Just give people the option to be able to opt in or opt out a lot of these options or give them a version that's a light version which they can use, which is free for them to use so they don't have to use a heavily bloated uh, system. Also, that means that people don't have to use applications to turn off all the telemetry and all of the data collecting and all these sort of things that they're using, like software and tweaks that they find on the internet which break their operating system in the long run. Give people the option to do what they want, whether they want to update or whether they don't want to update. Let people make the choice for themselves and basically give power back to the people rather than forcing them to do something. And I think the same thing goes for data collecting and telemetry. Give people the option to turn it off. It's a simple toggle button which you can add in, which allow people to just toggle it on or toggle it off, whether you want to opt in or opt out. It's a simple process. And you shouldn't be having to redo that every time there's an update. People get tired of having to go through all of that rigmarole of turning that off every single time. I suppose the last one is, will it be free? Well, you can activate this version of Windows, uh, which is Windows 11, uh, with Windows 10 key. So it looks like it's going to be the same gig as it was with Windows 10, where you can upgrade to the latest version. I'm pretty sure that's going to be the case. Anyway, that's my thoughts of Windows 11. I think it's a pretty nice uh, OS. It is just Windows 10 with a facelift. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Big shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. Have a lovely weekend, and I'll see you again real soon. Bye for now.